your home search. You shouldn't be buying a house right now, not in this market. I'm just kidding. In this episode of Give Work Play, we're gonna talk about the cost of waiting to buy a house. And we might throw in a little bit about renting versus buying and what is the better option. I'm Ginger Walker, the team lead of Give Back team of Coldwell Banker Elite. And today I'm joined by Jesse Prince of USA Mortgage. And I'm so excited to have the opportunity for her to help us understand what really is the cost of waiting to buy a home? Because we do hear that right now. I'm gonna wait until the market calms down. I'm gonna wait until interest rates go down. I'm gonna wait until home prices come down because I've also heard that there's a housing bubble that's going to burst. All right, so let's dig right in and talk about the top three reasons why you should not wait to buy a house in this market. So Jesse, tell us, what's the number one reason why you should not wait to buy a house right now? So the number one cost of waiting, as I like to refer to it, is that there are going to be unknown, an unknown set of costs depending on when you wait to buy your home. Hard money costs. If interest rates go up, closing costs, there might be some additional buyer strategies, appraisal gaps. Things are going to be more expensive as we head into the end of the year, and there are some unknowns about that. It's a money consideration, number one. So that makes sense to me because appreciation is still continuing to go up along with interest rates. So if you don't buy today and lock your loan in six months, we might be looking at a more expensive house at a higher interest rate. That's right. And that leads to number two, actually. You mentioned that house, housing being more expensive, and that's spot on. So when housing becomes more expensive, and if we choose not to buy now, just for example, $350,000 home, six months to a year, that same home might be selling for $375,000. Not only are you now paying $25,000 more for a home, you have missed the critical number two cost of waiting, which is equity. That's wealth. That is wealth building. It's appreciation. That is a part of your overall financial strategy. So that's definitely something that gets overlooked when we talk about the cost of waiting. It's more than just the dollars and cents. You will be paying more dollars and more cents for a higher priced house at a potentially higher rate but you're gonna be missing out on the equity that you would have otherwise gained. So what is the number three reason why you shouldn't wait to buy a house right now? This is the one that everyone forgets to talk about until it's too late or until they're already feeling it. And that's the cost of sacrifice. If you buy a house six months to 12 months from now and your payment is $200 a month higher than what you wanted to spend, what are you gonna to have to sacrifice? Is it dinner out at your favorite spot? Is it saving for the Christmas presents? Is it saving for vacation? Is it a sports league? So that makes sense to me too. We have seen interest rates go up. We have seen appreciation of the homes go up. And therefore, if you wait to lock, the longer you wait, the more expensive the payment's going to be over time. That's right. So then let me ask the question, because you have to live somewhere. You sure do. And I know a lot of people that we're working with in the Northern Virginia area, are possibly renting. So if you're renting, let's talk about what is the difference between the advantage of buying versus renting right now from your perspective. I'd say number one is stability. If you enter into a fixed rate mortgage, you know what your housing expense is going to be this year, next year, and conceivably, even if you don't refinance, for the next 360 months. Oh gosh, that sounds like a long time. It does, <laughs> but at least I can plan for it. That's true. If I'm renting, rent is increasing at upwards of 22% year over year in some markets. You have no control over that. All of us are making a mortgage payment. Some of us are making our landlord's mortgage payment. So I guess that would say to me that, look, if I had the opportunity to buy versus rent, that renting is an unknown for future. You're not building the equity in your own future. You're building it for someone else. And at that point, when you think you're ready to stick your toes in the water of being a homeowner, it's probably going to cost you more in the long run. It will. And renting is probably going to cost more than owning a home in many markets as well. So you may actually be able to have your own home for less than you would be paying in rent. Let me just say that, yes, there's going to be a cost associated with either renting or buying. And that's why, A, you should stay tuned to this channel because we're going to talk about that in another video. But you also want to consult your lender, and your realtor to help you through that part of the process. I'm Ginger Walker, the team lead of Give Back Team at Coldwell Bank Early, and I'm joined by Jesse Prince of the Prince Team at USA Mortgage. Thank you so much for joining us in this video, and make sure not only to like and subscribe to this channel, but stay tuned for another video with Jesse talking about the different loan types that might be appropriate for you. Thanks for watching.